Hey group, it's Pitt and I'm back with some more MBTI. Today we're going to be checking out Tim Pool. This is an interview from the Meet Kevin podcast and I'm unfamiliar with it. So we're going to dig into the podcast and him and we're going to see if we can get some insights into how the, main, the mind works, right? The point here is not to diagnose Tim with anything, but it is to help us to identify things within ourselves that can help us to improve ourselves. And the point of the whole thing is to use the system that I devised you have never seen MBTI done the way that I do it because I change some of the definitions. I change some of the way that things work and they just work better. If you're confused about that, you should check out the playlist that I have on it. The MBTI parts is included in the infinite integrations playlist and the playlist that this particular video is on. This is the chart that I use. It makes it really easy. There are five dichotomous choices that help you to determine how your mind works. What this deals with is what information you take in and see as most important and how you give it back to people. The first dichotomous choice is, are you focused more on things or ideas? Is it the tangible things that you can put your hands on, even up to and including evidence? Or is it the ideas of things from now into the future, things that you cannot put your hands on? If your main concern is things that you cannot put your hands on, then you are ideas. That's an N. If you can put your hands on them, it is things. Uh, what you do with that determines the next step. Is it new or is it old? If it is new, then you are always seeking the new, the best, the shiny, or to give other people experiences. If it is the old, it is organizing all of the things that other people find, figuring out which one is the best, which particular part is best suited to this task. And it is also receiving the, the experiences. You are more about your experience than other people's. Um, next, it is what do you do that for? If you are gathering new things, do you gather that to give them to the tribe or do you gather that to give them to yourself? doesn't necessarily mean selfish if you are self-centered. It means that you use the thing first and then you give it away to your tribe. Uh, this determines whether you are an I or an E. It is not about whether you hang out on the wall. Next is rigid or flexible. Is your way the way or is someone else's idea a valid point? And you try to figure out how to flex around that. That determines whether you are an F or uh, a T. And then finally, direct and informative is going to deal with how you give the information back. Are you chasing rabbit holes? Do you go down long, lengthy explanations that don't really lead anywhere? Or do you give the information, as long as it may be, in clear, concise terms? As much information as needed and no more. That's direct and informative. And that's going to determine how you give the information back. And it's going to determine whether you are a regular or an alternate in this system. With that explanation being said, we are going to dive into this podcast. Like I said, I am unfamiliar with this podcast. I jumped forward to the most replayed part, and we're going to take it from there and see what Meet Kevin and Tim Pool have to say. Again, this is a way to help us identify patterns of thinking so that we can identify within ourselves some of the things that we want to change or to amplify. Let's dig in and see what's up. What do you think about uh, individual's responsibility in wealth creation? 100%. I, you know, for whatever reason, I don't like the idea of someone being born into money and then acting as though they're worthy of it. <laughs> but I'm not going to insult or deride or discriminate because somebody was inherited wealth. I have a lot of friends who were born into wealthy families who are totally detached from the plight of the working class. And I have people who were born working class who have lost touch. And I think it's fair to say probably I and many others who have found success lose touch into a certain degree. Okay, so what have we seen so far? I see a little bit of an emphasis towards tribe, right? He is very concerned about making sure that the tribe's thoughts on this matter are, are clear, right? I have friends who were in this situation Right? He's making sure that everybody understands that he, he gets that. So that, that gives a tribe tendency uh, that does lean a little bit towards flexibility, but not really enough to make much determination about. But so far, this is very short, right? 
So far, we're dealing with ideas. This is wealth, and it's not talking about the physical things of wealth, but the idea of wealth. The question was kind of structured that way, but it could have been taken either way. And this is more staying towards the idea than getting into the nitty-gritty of this is the game plan, right? So that is more ideas than it is things. Still, very early. Let's continue. And uh, you, 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 it normalizes for you. You don't realize it. But uh, when it comes to generating wealth, it's you. You know, let's... That's a very, this is the box type thing, right? That's put it, the idea in the box. Generation of wealth comes down to individual effort is a box. Here's a poker analogy. I love poker. Worst possible hand you can get when the game starts. That sounds a little bit informative, right? This is seven deuce offsuit, seven two of two different suits, two different symbols. The best is two aces. The chance of winning with that's the best thing. Seven deuce against aces is like eleven or nine percent. It's like ridiculously bad. I, I think it might be like twelve. You gotta get it straight. Good luck. Yeah, <laughs> but but you the, so, so. that's some technical precision that that leans towards a T, right? Technical precision of I don't want to be off by a percentage in this random stat that I am pulling that I read two weeks ago, a month ago. I want to make sure that you understand that I am being. I'm not trying to pin down this one stat, right? 14, 13, 12. Some it's somewhere's in here, but I want to make sure I list them off, right? So I'm not misunderstood. Is a control. So, so the reason 7-2 is so bad is that you, you can't make a straight between the two oh, cards. you can't? You're right. right. You're one card off. <gasps> exactly. See, I'm not the best poker player, clearly. Right. So <laughs> two, a, a oh, pair of twos right. loses to everything. A pair of sevens is going to lose to half the board. With two different suits, you can't make a flush. The gap between 7 and 2 is so great, you can't make a straight. The, That's a lot of remembered statistics. The only thing you can get is like if two sevens hit the board or two, or two two, so you get three of a kind. It's really, really difficult. But here's the thing. doesn't matter. You can have aces... And I can have, you can have the best hand, I can have the worst hand. And then the first three cards come out, with Texas Hold'em style. And it's uh, four, five, six. And then the person holding the pair of aces says, wait a minute, someone could have a straight with right. four, five, six. Because and actually, have, I have seven. Yeah, three, which, seven maybe, yeah. Well, I've got two sevens. Right, so right, right. Have, but they don't know that. And so what I, what I do is, the person with the aces, they make a bet, I raise, I make a bigger bet. We're way into the weeds here. We're way off into a rabbit hole here. This is one of the best informatives that I've had so far, right? Informatives aren't malicious. Informatives aren't intentionally dragging you off. It's just the way the conversation naturally wanders. The bet. Yeah. And now they're like, uh-oh. He's got the string. He hit it, didn't he? Yeah. He flopped it. And they go, I don't want to do this, but I think you hit it. And they flip over the aces and fold them. And then you flip over the bluff. <laughs> I had nothing. You gave up. Why? Even though I was dealt the worst possible hand and you were dealt the best, I played it right. Wow. And I win the money. So that's, that's the life lesson right there. And the simple one is we're all, we're all dealt different cards. It's how you play them that, that determines it. That'd be fair. If you played a game of poker and every hand you got was 7-2, you'd be miserable. <laughs> and you'd be losing. Yeah. And if every hand you got was aces, you'd be... It's every hand you got instead of every hand I got. That's another tribe signifier, right? We're dealing again with, like, he's dealing with a lot of details. So this could be very much an, an S situation as opposed to an N situation. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot of details, right? Details come down to SI <clears throat> most of the time because SI loves to organize things. They love for things to be in a tidy little spot that, that fits perfectly where it belongs, right? That is what SI is all about. They love their organization. So this is very much leading me more towards that than ideas. And I was really expecting Tim to be more of an N.E. because he's always exploring ideas. But that's his business. This is him in conversation. You have a different persona. You talk about different topics. For the most part, you can still make the determination from either one. But it, it takes more when they're on guard than when they are relaxed. It's just how things work, right? It's, it's the same no matter what you're dealing with. Be winning yeah. endlessly, and then people would stop playing with you. Sure. So, uh, but, but for the most part, <clears throat> there's a, uh, there was a study done on poker. They found that I think it's uh, 75, or 75 to 80% of winning hands were not the best hand. 
Wow, 75%. To 80, yeah. So and that that means you're more likely to succeed with a deficit at the start. It's, it's you, you can view it that way from the surface, but it's more so poker is a game of people, not a game of cards. Yeah, I got a buddy who... That, that gives me a control vibe, right? Let's, let's go back and listen to this. It, it's more of a, it's trying to, let's nudge it more a little bit towards this box. But it's more so poker is a game of people, not a game of cards. Yeah, I got a buddy who loves playing poker. He knows all There's the There's the idea. And then uh, I played a ridiculous hand. Three, five suited. Really low, hard to win. And then I won. I won a couple hundred bucks. And he was like, what were you doing? And I was like, it doesn't matter what I have. It matters how they're acting. Is the person making the bet against me scared? That is a tribe feedback, right? That is an intentional tribe feedback right there, right? So that is using intentionally that part of the sack. I'll give you an example. The other day, uh, I had three, four suited, three, three, four of spades. And the board came out something like uh, seven, nine, ten with two hearts. If there's three hearts, a three of one suit on the board, someone could have a flush pretty strong. So the other guy looks at the board, he makes a bet. I call. The next card comes out as a heart. He immediately pulls his head back and then goes back down. And I'm like, he doesn't got it. <laughs> so then he checks, meaning I'm not going to make a bet. And then I say, all in. And I push $300 in the middle. And he goes, shakes his head. And then he throws his cards in the middle. And I flip over the bluff. And that's a try to read back. Right. He showed me he was weak. And so I knew I couldn't beat his cards. I had garbage. But I also knew he was scared, and, and I ended up winning, you know, a decent amount of money. Oh, I think it was like 150 right. bucks. Good for you. But there you go. There you go. Poker analogy complete. That's the general idea. If, if you are going to succeed in this world, the, uh, I think it was, um, there's a TED talk about this. They tracked all of these different stories of success. Businesses that. We're not on another rabbit hole, are we? Like, this is an informative rabbit hole. That's literally what it is. It's not like he's just chasing random facts. But these analogies are rabbit holes, right? I'm going to tell you about this article. I'm going to tell you about this poker game. I'm going to tell you about this situation is rabbit holing. The fact that it takes a good bit to tell you the story, there's not a whole lot of meat in it, right? A direct person is going to tell you what they think about it without having to go into the analogies. That's not to say that any analogy makes you informative, but if your pattern is to use these type of things, you're probably informative that were working, they found there is one aspect that people had that was correlated with success, and it was not wealth, appearance, it was perseverance. Wow. There were people born into wealthy families who lost it all. They gave up. Not wealth or appearance, it's perseverance. That's, are, like, he's really into the, st the statistics. He's really into the, the articles and the things that, like, an article is an idea, right? But it's put on paper. You can actually touch it. It is a validation from the tribe that is going to be TE meat all day long. They're going to like, the tribe said this. And whether it's right or wrong, they may push back against wrong information, but it's about the tribe said this. If you are consistently correcting people, then you're probably controlling in that manner. Like, I, the, the, the referencing here leads me towards gathering um organizing the things like he i have seen these articles here are the ones that are worth seeing i have seen this news here is the news worth watching and it's not about the idea necessarily it is more about the occurring and the recording which makes it a thing more than an idea and that can be a little bit tricky to navigate so again this is not like clinical diagnosis of anything people born into poverty who never made a dime. And there were people who were born into poverty who became millionaires because they never gave up. Wow. And they said that was it. And that's, that's what I, we, were, we were talking about this a bit before. Failure is an important component of, uh, of, of life. If you fail and then stop, that's it, it's over. But if you fail and keep going, you will succeed. And then that's Amazing. more idea, right? That's why we have to keep going because that is more of an idea box, which would be S or NI. Wow. Which is, again, organizing. He's very organized. So uh, the organization really isn't even what we're looking at. We're trying to figure out right now more of things versus ideas. Now, I, I have a lot of knowledge of Tim. I, I'm a Tim Cast member. I'm on the Discord. Like, 
I watched the shows. I, I I know a good bit about him outside of this particular interview. So I know that he tends to be more ideas. I'm trying to be objective, like, and and point out the different ways that it could go because this is a very subjective thing. That's why it's more about you taking something out of it for yourself than it is about projecting anything on someone else. Oh, that, to, well, let's clarify this point too. Yeah. Success doesn't mean you're going to be a millionaire. Right. Success right, could right, mean right. that you got a good paying job and you're moving forward. That's an idea. Success could mean that on the treadmill of life, you've advanced one foot versus falling back behind and getting dragged away. It, that, it sounds like that's a flexibility around an idea. Right? It's very important then for us as if that's not my means of success is success. That is a there are many means to success. So that is more of a flexibility than a control individuals to study people and people skills why aren't we teaching more of that in schools yeah i guess the idea is that kids learn to socialize with each other in schools it's one of the arguments they make against homeschooling but while you will learn some basics of human interaction without proper guidance you know a parent or parents to explain morals to you it can go one of two different i mean there, there's no guarantee that the lesson you're trying to teach sticks the way you're trying to teach it are you a proponent of homeschooling? Oh, and see, that's kind of an, an easy way of looking at things, too. Let's take that back. And, or parents to explain. Mm -hmm. But while you will learn some basics of human interaction, without proper guidance, you know, a parent or parents to explain morals to you, it can go one of two different directions. I mean, there, there's no guarantee that the lesson you're trying to teach sticks the way you're trying to teach it. Are you a proponent of homeschooling? Yeah, that, that, that's a very open to ideas way of looking at it right that's not trying to push the idea of education into any particular box really? oh yeah absolutely will you homeschool do you have children i do not um but absolutely they will be homeschooled wow uh but this also means that they that is a this is the box we will meet with local parents and the kids will play with each other and learn to socialize they'll learn from us that's a very good way to do it like i took a very involved part of my child children's lives more so than most people are willing to do. And so I didn't have to homeschool. I also live in an area with great schools that we didn't have to deal with a whole lot of the same issues that other places do. So. Not from, uh, they'll learn some things from each other because some things, you know, humans have to learn to develop on their own, but they'll, they'll learn behaviors uh, and manners from the adults around them, which we will try to have an outsized influence on, of course. But, uh, you know, when that time comes, I suppose. That's amazing. Uh, That's not a specific things, right? That is not a specific things list. That is more of an open ideas. So, yeah, we're going to keep looking. A couple more questions. When on social media today, one of the reasons it seems like we have these stronger echo chambers is that uh, I once invited, uh, actually potentially twice, I can't remember now, but I invited Lauren Southern on, <laughs> and uh, we had a great discussion, uh, and a lot of the commentary I got was, how could you platform this person? <laughs> What's your response to this idea of platforming someone when really you're looking for their perspective and having a discussion? I think that shows the weakness of what we refer to as the tribal left they can't defend their ideas against their political opponents so they hide from them it's just that their, their argument they make is that by platforming lauren southern you give space to her ideas that means literally nothing to me because if i bring someone on who has bad ideas i will destroy those ideas in real time <laughs> if my ideas are weak and would lose to my political enemies well you can't platform them then think about it this way they say if you platform lauren southern people are going to hear what she says and then agree with her and it's like, so you're saying she'll be persuasive and convince them of her position, and I won't be able to counter it? <laughs> there's, there, there's no concern if I platform someone I disagree with. We, we had a, a... Again, that whole section, we haven't really dealt with anything's really things-based, right? This has all been ideas. It has been fairly open ideas. Like, we have had a couple of boxes, but those aren't... The, the main focus seems to be open ideas new ideas you know one guy on uh, the show that had an absurd position on, on, on abortion but then there's that which uh, goes into boxes right like it really is different listening to him here than how he is on the podcast because on the podcast 
he's very much in control of his work situation, right? Like, it's very hard to be a guest on TimCast because if he doesn't agree with what you say, you're going to get hammered, right? And we're not seeing a lot of that here. We're getting some reciprocal energy. It's very low-key. So the control movement for me is a little bit difficult too because we've seen some flex around ideas, but that can be more open ideas, like new ideas. That's more focused towards ideas and finding new ones as opposed to flexing around the old ones. What he's saying here is more of a rigid, this is the idea, right? We've seen that a couple of times already and that leans more towards the T than the NI because it, it's him not flexing around, but he accepts the possibilities. So it's more of a control and new ideas to me so far than it has been a put the idea in the box, even though there have been a couple of instances of put the ideas in the box. And I'm really surprised it's an NE. Yeah, uh, more than anything, because Tim is quite controlling, but like that could that's apparently not as much organization as it is just the T, and and controlling does not necessarily mean overbearing or bad. I know people like to take terminology and run with it, but it's just a manner of your your personality displaying, right? Doesn't mean that you're you know mean. It just means that you're very firm in who you are and what you believe. Uh, this is this is, uh, I'll, I'll leave his name out of it just so I you know so I don't drag him but he said uh, if a woman wants to get abortion at any point she should be allowed to oh wow okay. any, at any point for any reason uh. it's her choice and then I said okay well what about meth and he's like what and I was like well, can a pregnant woman do meth and he was like well no because that intentionally kills the baby uh. <laughs> and you see I'm like <laughs> oops <laughs> right I'm not worried about this guy coming in here because like I've had friends ask me hey I'm gonna debate this person do you think this argument is good and I'm like why do you need my opinion on your opinion? Do you believe what you're saying? And can you back up what you're saying? And if someone tells you something that contradicts your view and proves you wrong, would you reject it? So I'm like, there's no debate. That's, that's very N.E., right? That's very open to ideas. Not necessarily accepting them, right? Not necessarily taking them as dogma and putting that box. But being very accepting to the idea that there are other ideas to consider. That is very N.E. The way he goes about it leans me more towards T. If I invite one of these guys on my show, no one cares that I platform him because- And it's interesting, right? It's always interesting to see the contradictory of tribe and control because he seems to be more tribe oriented. He is about we statements. He is about the group effort he is about the, the right uh, getting the community like even with the education question that's that's very tribe bounce back as you're resisting the tribe in your controlling manner i am going to control my children's education but we are going to make sure that they interact with tribe that's very much what that gives me right there so um we're just about where i need to be right i'm going to go ahead let's make sure we got ideas we have new, we have uh, tribe, we have rigid, and we have informative. So let's go ahead, do a determination. We're going to look and see what we get, and then we'll come back and see what we get from that. So what we have coming down is going to be ideas. That is going to be the right-hand side here. We have new. That is going to be this third column. It is a uh, tribe that is going to be the bottom two boxes and out of the bottom two boxes it is the T because it is more rigid so that is going to be an E N T P and he is going to be informative let me go ahead and pull up this bo this other one real quick E N T P is right here and we will transition that is the wrong thing there we go E N T P and so what we have here, <clears throat> the determinant factor is going to be the third section down, right? Do you give all the information back in an extroverted manner or do you hold the information for yourself in an introverted manner? And Tim is informative, so he is going to be just a straight up ENTP. 
It's going to put him looking for all the future possibilities, but he is going to be very much in control of his logic, right? That is what TI represents is logic. So he is in E looking without even thinking about it and getting all the ideas. He sees all the ideas 90% of the time, 90 plus percent of the time, flawlessly. That, 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 that negative 9% there, that can really kick you in the butt, but for the most part, he sees it fine. And then he feels responsible for making sure everyone understands his logic. That seems to fit fairly well with the Tim that I know from the internet. Um, the FE is going to be making sure that the ethics are upheld, right? That is where he is going to get defensive. That is where he is going to be either miscommunicating or maybe even over communicating or maybe having a hard time shaping his words around. But that is the driver for his defensive pushback is going to be other people's ethics. Uh, not necessarily his morals, but what the, his tribe, his tribe, has decided is the correct ethics. Uh, he's going to be very focused on what has happened, right? But he will have a tendency to overlook things that he does not find to be important. He will like organization, but he won't be the best at executing the organization, right? Uh, unless he has become... Uh, determined to do so, right? You can always grow within your stack and part of that through the natural courses of life happens, right? If you are disorganized as a child and you recognize the consequences of it and therefore become organized, then you have grown stronger in your stack. That's what we're trying to do here consciously as adults. Uh, and it can happen spontaneously by itself at any point in time. But the way that you receive the information doesn't really change, right? You still look at the ideas. The way that you relay the information back really doesn't change. It is focused on the ethics. Oh, the bottom part of the stack is where things get messed up. Everybody uses all of the stack, the whole functions, right? Everything is used by everybody, but to different degrees. The bottom part of the stack really receives more of the negative information coming in. So, oh, you receive less information in the middle two, which is going to be S, I, and N, E here. But this is really where your core is at. Uh, what you really want to do, and what does Tim really want to do according to this? Well, he wants to give people the best guidance. He can see all of these possibilities, and he can logic check them almost effortlessly. And he wants to relay that back to people. But in order to do that, then he has to get into the TE, which is what other people think. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard to know what other people are think for him. It's a little bit hard to slide into that position because it's a little bit too controlling in his overall psyche. So this is an area that you would work on, right? But this is where you really get fed. He is doing that five times a week. This podcast probably does more to feed his soul than the Daily Shows did, right? He is out there getting all of these ideas on the Daily Show, and he's bringing them to people and logic checking them out loud for the tribe, right? Against the ethics. Like, he is using his stack very well. And, uh, but the ability to bring in these other perspectives and other viewpoints is going to strengthen him greatly if he can learn to flex around. He is getting better as he goes along, but Tim does have a, a tendency to be a little bit overbearing on his guests or on his co-host. And it's not in an intentional, mean type of manner. It's just his personality coming through. All of us have some room to grow. Some of us need to be more firm. Some of us need to flex a little more. If you're here on the bottom half with your tea, you're probably needing to flex around the tribe just a little bit more. Oh. Next is going to be the sacral, right? And the sacral is really your, your sexual desire area. I know a lot of people like to associate that with the base. That is not correct. It is the sacral area, which is the reproductive area in the human being. And it is concerned mostly with that type of a situation, right? It is, it is about existence, but it's where you tend to unintentionally choose the wrong thing. It's where you tend to get guided by hormones or things of that nature, right? His thing is going to be 
past feelings and morals. Well, this thing made me feel bad. I'm going to hold on to that forever. Instead of focusing on this thing made me feel good. That is a choice, right? But it is not one that you are normally consciously making. It is something that you subconsciously hold on to. This is kind of where you do that. And because you had the negative experience going forward, you will look at that particular section the same way, right? It has made me feel bad in my morals or in just my feelings. And so I'm going to avoid that type of a situation. And then where is going to get tripped up, right? The base is you get a lot of energy, right? But it's mostly incorrect unless you were intentional about it and you're making sure that you are doing it. And that is the things for Tim. It is new experiences for, or yeah, new experiences or giving other people experiences. Uh, and so there will be a tendency to not pay attention to the material things, right? They're there, but they're not that important, right? You hear Tim say all the time, I can live in a van. That is this energy, right? I can literally live with nothing. That's fine, right? That is that S-E demon. Uh, it can be, I don't care about things at all, right? S-I demon, which is the flip side of this, is I don't organize correctly at all. Everything I do is completely disorganized. I cannot seem to maintain the schedule unless I intentionally do it. It's going to be that for SE. It's going to be, I'm going to be, I, I can't finish unless I make myself, right? Now, Tim is very driven. Tim makes himself finish a lot of projects. He's got a lot going on, too. I'm not, uh, but for him, it's not about the things, right? It's not about the accumulation, like, Freedomistan, where he is building, is about the tribe. It is about the crew. It is about the cast. It is about his people. He is building a complex, and a lot of the crew lives there. He is building businesses for his people to come accumulate at, and so that he can expand upon the ideas that they bring. And so I think that's what we're going to get. Again, this is not a clinical diagnosis of anything. This is just me speculating based upon things that I see based on what someone says on the internet. So it is not firm. It is not, you are absolutely this. But it is to help us to try to identify things that help us get better, right? If you identify with the way that Tim controls things, then the T part of this makes sense to you. And if you are looking for ideas all the time, then the NE part of this makes sense to you. And you look at, well, do I think of ideas or do I think of things? And it really can help you figure out what, where you need to shift focus and what you need to strengthen. Your base, your sacral, your solar plexus, and your heart are really things that you're going to need to work on. I suggest starting at the bottom. I have a playlist called Infinite Integrations that tells you how to work your way up through this and to do things. I have a specific video on the ENTP and the alternate if you're more interested in that. It is about 45 minutes long and it contains a lot of information. We're gonna go back to the interview. We're gonna watch a little bit more. I'll finish it out on my own if, it, if we don't hear. We're just gonna look for some confirmations on what I think. And so let's dig in and see what's up. He's allowed to be right. And so if someone comes in and says, women should be allowed to do this, that, or otherwise, I say, okay, you know, that's your opinion you're allowed to have. Let me ask you a follow-up question then based on that logic. All right, so this, that, your, and otherwise is not specific things. It is broad, general things. So any logic, logical view on this, how do you feel about this? You give me a sound logic an answer. I'll say, that's fine. You're allowed to have an opinion. You. So far, we're looking good, right? So far, that is a direct example of an N-E-T-I-F-E -E right there, like, that's that's pretty good, yeah. Give me an illogical answer, and You'll I still it. don't care. Sure. You know, so when he said women can't do meth, it intentionally kills the baby, I said, well, hold on there a minute. I, I, I didn't say, ha I got you. I said, I don't understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that women can choose to terminate the pregnancy whenever they want, but if they take a drug that would terminate the pregnancy, right, he's allowed to be right. And if he's wrong, then he's wrong. And if someone comes on, we've had, a, a, like Michael Malz, for instance, a real good friend of ours, and he made an argument about defunding the police. And I said, 
Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I have no argument for that. He's, he's, he's allowed to introduce information I didn't consider, and if the logic fits... I'm, I'm just saying. I'll say, okay. You're allowed to have this idea. Look, this new idea is perfectly okay. Then as long as it is logically consistent, then it's okay. N-E-T-I-F-E. -E. So, you know, the platforming idea is, a, is an argument from people who want to win political power without actually having to be right. Your take on defunding the police, then? Oh, yeah. We, uh, I'm in favor of it and against it at the same time. Oh. It's actually really... That's an interesting uni. Simple. If a city like uh, San Francisco wants to defund the police, I don't care. I don't live there. <laughs> and if you're seeing rampant crime and the raiding of these stores and they're locking things up, <laughs> shutting down CVS, shutting down Walgreens, and it is extremely disruptive, you've got drug problems, and you think police should be defunded, who am I? to force my worldviews and political views onto your city. I don't live there. How dare I in I box that down for you? There, I don't vote there. However, personally, I would never do that where I live. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't want to defund the police. Like, I think police need more funding. What poli police better need training, more funding, better funding. <clears throat> for, for training, more funding for different departments that handle different tasks. It should be the best paid, hardest to get, most accountable job we have. And the next should be teacher. Right, cop and teachers should be the highest paid, hardest to get jobs we have. The You get the left response of we should have social workers. And my response is I like community outreach police that deal with certain certain crimes. I don't think we need to send a body armor wearing cop with a rifle to do traffic control. And uh, I asked the question, why is a cop doing traffic control armed? And uh, like his, his gun could be in his car. The question, people, I got response from conservatives saying, yeah, but what if like a criminal shoots at him or whatever? And I'm like, dude, we've got other problems if people are just shooting at random people in the streets. And I think you have SWAT, you have beat cops, you have traffic cops, you could have community. That's how we do it here. The outreach police. That's more funding, more training, and a diversification of the department. I do think ultimately, though, the issue isn't the police themselves. It is uh, cultural. It's, it's the density of urban populations. You live in a small town. You've got 10 cops, they know you. Yeah. You get pulled over, the cop walks up, and he goes, Kevin, <laughs> come on, man, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'll give me, I'm giving you a warning right now, but we're gonna, like, if, if, if I, you know, I'm gonna tell your wife when I see her that you were speeding again, what do you think she's gonna say? You're gonna be like, oh, John, please, 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 please. I will never do it again. There's like small town social components where we know each other and, and cop might not like you, he might be a neighborhood rival and he's gonna- There's our rabbit hole, right? Be like, Kevin, you son of a, I. And it's not that it's not entertaining. It's not that it's not giving us information. By definition, it is. It's just not necessarily information relevant to the current conversation, which makes it informative as opposed to direct. To direct. I think that we're good here. I think that we can go ahead and wrap this one up. Once again, I am going to state that this is not a medical diagnosis. I am not a doctor and I don't care to be. I don't really care about diplomas, degrees, or schooling. I spend my free time learning things, and one of the things that I learned was how to help myself. I did this for me first before I gave it to anybody. Before I discussed it with anybody, I had already worked out 99% of it. There have been other things that people have contributed to it, but the, the restructuring is mine, right? I did that over an, extorm, in, an extraordinarily long period of time. But I did that entirely for me with no intention whatsoever of dispensing that for anybody else. I'm self. This helped me. And I was like, you know what? It might be able to help some other people too. So I put it out there and it has. So I continue. It took me a little while to get comfortable with the thought of doing this because I am not diagnosing anybody. This is just trying to identify some of the markers that you can use to use the system to help yourself. It's all about what you do. I fully agree with Tim there. You can take full control of your destiny. That includes your finances and it includes your mental health. I talk about that extensively. I have several playlists that are devoted to things of that nature. I have well over a thousand videos and well over 2,000 hours invested in helping people to understand their mind. That is nothing compared to the time that I put in trying to figure out this one. 
Hopefully I brought a little bit of enlightenment. Hopefully I brought a little bit of entertainment. And hopefully I can help you to help you. Because I can't change you. I don't want to. I want to help you to find the tools that you need to help you. To the crew. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate every single minute that you are here with me. And I am praying for you every single day. Until next time, I love you. God loves you. You are perfect, whole, and complete. Just the way that you are. And this has been Pit Take. Peace.